child. That's what I do. It's what I live for, to help unfortunate merfolk like yourself. Poor souls with no one else to turn to. I admit that in the past I've been a nasty. They weren't kidding when they called me well a witch. But you'll find Hello, that everybody. Days, I've mended all my ways, repented, seen the light, and made a switch. Two years. And I fortunately know a little magic. I it's promise a there's a that reason. I always have possessed. And here lately, please don't laugh. I use it on behalf of the miserable, lonely, and depressed. Pathetic. Poor unfortunate souls in pain, in need. This one longing to be thinner, that one wants to get the girl, and do I help them? Yes, indeed. Those poor unfortunate souls. Okay, poor souls. I play this because. I got the most amazing gift in my box today. Check her out, bitches! Holy shit! It's Ursula! In my house! <laughs> Check it out! Ursula! In my fucking house! What? Oh my god! How fucking cool is that? Ursula in my house. Yeah, that's right. It's fucking true. Now I gotta figure out how I can best include her in the shot so you can see her and me. What? <laughs> Isn't that awesome? Okay. That's the greatest gift yet. Oh my goodness. It actually is from a very good friend of mine. Uh, my friend Steven, who's a big Disney nerd like I am. And he wanted to cheer me up. Because <laughs> you know... I'm a little miserable. And after yesterday, definitely a lot miserable. So there she is, Ursula. Which, by the way, uh, my friend Norma had sent me um, a link to, to this. A while. Like, God, back in like around, um, I don't know, uh, like Halloween time maybe? Anywho, super excited. Is the noise too much? Can you hear the fan too much? I didn't know if you would be able to hear it too loud or not. If it is, I'll turn her off and um, you won't have to listen to her in the background. But anyway, there she is. Fucking Ursula in my house. What? One of you says no, it's fine. The other one says yes, too loud. Oh, you can hear fine. Okay, all right, good. Okay, so, um, it's, Clambot says I can hear it, but it's not bothersome. Okay, well, that's good to know. Okay, so, goodness gracious, what a day I have had. I don't even know where, oh, where, oh, where to begin. Oh, Trucker Giddy, I feel so sorry. Every day I get a, a, a Twitter message from her. Why isn't there a link for your Periscope for today? I don't know, because Periscope's being an asshole. I'm not sure. I don't know. What do you want me to say? I can't help it that Periscope doesn't always work. Is she a sex doll, too? Ooh, no, I don't want to have sex with her. I just want to look at her and see how awesome she is. I kind of want to put her out on my lawn all year round. But I feel like I might, that might be going too far. <laughs> uh, Sean says, I look so much better when I'm happy. Well, thank you. I agree. When I'm crabby, I'm crabby. But today I'm in a good mood. Um, even though it's been a little bit of a stressful day. Trucker Giddy is like, please, someone post a link to your to your Periscope so I can watch. Doesn't, I, well, I'm going to have to talk to that girl. Doesn't she realize, I don't think you can post a link until after it's done? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. Anywho. Whatever. Oh, hey, Sharonda! I'm glad you made it here into the old uh, Periscope land. Okay, so what was my day like? Whoa. First, I woke up at a ridiculous hour. <sighs> 6.30 in the morning. Just let that sink in for a minute. Romaine, awake at 6.30 in the morning. Why was Romaine awake at 6.30 in the morning? Well, let me tell you, kids. I had to go into the city today because I had a mandatory appointment at the unemployment office. Yes, this is the glamorous side of unemployment. It sucks. Getting up at 6.30 in the morning for someone who typically doesn't go to bed until a few hours before that, not good. So I woke up early and I 
I headed off my usual route to the city. So I went to the mall where I always park, grabbed the bus, got on the bus, zoomed into the city. Uh, city. What radio market? What do you mean what radio market? I don't even know what you're talking about. Anywho, zoomed into the city for my 10 o'clock fucking unemployment meeting. Now, here's the thing. I didn't know what to expect from this meeting. Like, uh, was I going to be meeting one-on-one -on -one with someone? Was it going to be some kind of class that I had to take? All I know is they sent me a letter that says, you want your unemployment benefits? Show up at this fucking place at uh, 10 a.m. Bring this paperwork all filled out. And, um, and then, uh, you know, you have to also have, I just, uh, cloud person, my profile does say radio host because I used to host a show on Sirius XM, but now I'm unemployed because, well, my show got canceled, but doesn't mean it's the end of me because I'm still looking for something new. Anyway, so I wasn't sure what to expect at the unemployment office. All I knew is I had to be there. I had to be there by 10 a.m. And I had to get up at 6.30 in the morning to get into the city by 10 a.m. Yeah, that's how crazy it is to have to commute from New Jersey to New York City during rush hour. Something I never had to do because when I used to work on the radio, uh, you know, it was not, I went in at like 3 in the afternoon. No problem. You were there within an hour. Nothing big. Anywho, whatever. It is what it is. So. I get to the unemployment office. I even arrive a little bit early and I'm like, oh, this is amazing. I go in a little bit early. Maybe they'll get me in a little bit early. I can get home a little bit early. It'll be great. Because Romy had to go to the daycare and all this blah, blah, blah crap. So I get there. And the first thing that happens is you, it's like going through TSA at the airport. I shit you not. You get there and you have to go up to the seventh floor. And then when you walk in off the elevator, there is like a security guard sitting at like a little podium, just like a TSA agent. I swear, it's just like a TSA agent. And then there's a security guard standing right next to the TSA agent to make sure that you don't cross the red line that is on the, on the ground. You have to wait to be called to talk to the TSA lady. That's what I'm gonna call her. I don't know what her real title is, but that's what I'm gonna call her. So then you get up there and you have to show her your ID and your paperwork telling you just like the airport and then they're like okay they write some stuff on it and then they send you down the hall to another TSA agent and another security guard same process you wait in line and if you cross that red line that security guard he is on it and he'll be like uh excuse me you're not allowed to cross that line you need to stand behind the line yeah so you get in the second line lady comes up uh, I need to see your paperwork and your resume. Here you go, right here. Bam, there it is. Great. Okay. She takes it, staples them together, hands me some kind of booklet thing, and says, "Go sit down in one of those twenty chairs behind me." Okay. Sure. All right. No big deal. So I go. I sit and I wait, thinking, "Okay, they're gonna call me in, or they're gonna call us all in." There's like maybe twenty other people there. They're gonna call us all in one at a time. We're gonna meet with whoever our person is. Blah blah blah. So I'm waiting and I'm waiting and I'm waiting and I'm waiting and I'm waiting. Like 25 minutes go by. I'm just sitting there. By the way, there's no cell phones allowed, no food or beverages allowed. So I didn't even have a cup of coffee with me. And I'm not allowed to use my cell phone while I'm sitting in this uh, patrolled area filled with security guard who is watching every fucking move. And if you so much as even look at a cell phone, he is going to yell at you. Real pleasant experience. So, I get myself, finally they, they call us in, they're like, anyone who has a white piece of paper, blah, 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 you need to move on down to this uh, room where you're going to start your class. What? A class? Are you fucking kidding me with this shit? Oh, no. I did not sign up for this. Now, here's the interesting thing. While you are waiting, you see all kinds of people. It's a very interesting, uh, like, cross-section of people that are there. There's the people who clearly don't give a shit whether they get a job or not because they're literally there in their pajamas. Then there's the people who kind of care, who have, like, a nice pair of pants on, maybe a nice-ish shirt. Then there are the people who clearly are professionals who dress very nicely even though they're going to the fucking unemployment office. I was one of those people. 
because I wasn't sure what the fuck you wear, but I figured better to put my best foot forward. You know what I'm saying? So, we go into this fucking room where they make you wait for another 40 fucking minutes. So we're sitting there waiting and a lady comes in and she goes, now if you didn't fill out your forms, you need to fill them out now. Really? We've already had to show 10 people our fucking forms. I'm pretty sure they're filled out. But guess what? Nope. They weren't because there were all these dumb bitches in the room who hadn't filled out their fucking paperwork. And I'm like, what the hell? What are you What are you people waiting for? You had a half an hour out there. You had all this time at home. Oh, my God. So I'm sitting there. I'm waiting, 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 waiting. Finally, the room fills up. Now there's probably like, I don't know, 50 people in the room, let's say. And then the lady comes in and starts her presentation. So, I don't even know how to explain it other than I want you to think of what Charlie Brown hears when his teacher is talking. Wah, 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 wah. Because that's what it was like. This lady was so boring. I mean, so beyond boring that I really wanted to take my pen and stick it in my eye because that might have actually livened up the room. It was bad. And it's all like, now you need to make sure that you fill out all of your records of how many jobs you're applying for. It's very important in the event you get audited. And you need to visit some career centers to find a job. And the whole time I'm thinking, bitch, I don't need this shit. I don't need this shit because I am not your typical everyday person looking for your typical everyday fucking job. I am a fucking entertainer. And I have to go through very specific channels to try to find a new job. That's what I, this, this shit doesn't even apply to me. So I sit there and she continues to talk about the dumbest shit I've ever heard about. About how you use LinkedIn and how, oh, do you have basic computer skills? Do you know how to send an email? I'm not shitting you. This is the kind of stuff that she was talking to us about. Do you know how to send a fucking email? No, I don't know how to fucking send an email. I've never sent an email in my whole entire life. What? And I get that they have to teach to the lowest denominator. I get it. But come on, couldn't they look at our resumes before we actually go there and maybe, I don't know, divide us into two groups, the people who clearly don't give a shit, who are unprepared, and maybe the people who are actual true professionals, but what, I, I mean, is that so much to ask? Is it? Evidently it is. So then they're like, now if you're still on unemployment in six to eight weeks, we're going to probably make you come back. If I never, ever have to step foot in that place again, it will be too soon. And then they're like, well, why don't you come and take one of our many classes where we can teach you how to write a resume or a cover letter, or we can teach you how to interview with someone. No, I don't want to learn from these people because these people are the most boring individuals I've ever seen in my entire life. And the experience made me want to kill myself. So no, mm -mm, I don't think so. No, thank you. I'm pretty sure I could watch a YouTube video more interesting than this shit. Just saying. And I'll probably fucking learn more. So, not happening if I can help it. Oh, God, please, Lord Jesus. Don't make me have to go back there. Good Lord, please. Let me get a job so I do not have to go back there. Someone asked, why New York if I live in New Jersey? Because Sirius XM is based out of New York and you have to go to wherever the business is, blah, 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 blah. <sighs> I'm telling you right now, it was some real shit. So eventually it got over and done with. I couldn't have been more relieved. I ran, literally ran from the building at top speed even though I walked into another torrential downpour I was so relieved to get out of there I was like I don't care I'm out peace out bitch I'm out of here okay so that's that then what did I do next I jumped on the subway and I hit it uptown where you might add oh you know around 49th and 6th Avenue if anyone knows where that is they would also know that's where the Sirius XM offices are why did I go there you might ask yourself well real easy Katie I went to have lunch with Katie you know our old producer Katie who's now working on a morning show 
Well, I love Katie, and I couldn't wait to see her, and I've been trying to set up times where I could uh, get together with her. And I only had a limited amount of time in the city, but she was the person I wanted to see. So, uh, I texted her, I'm like, I'm all done, I'm on my way, be ready for me. So we went and had a lovely lunch, did Katie pay. We bought our own lunches, thank you very much. Uh, and we had a great, uh, great lunch together. I got to learn all about her new show that she's working on. Um, Kim wants to know if she likes the morning hours better. No. Katie is not a morning person. She's really a nighttime person. She's like Derek and Romaine. That's why she was so great on our show. It was great to see her. She's doing really well. She wants everyone to know that she misses you guys. Um, and we definitely miss her. Uh, so yeah, so we were getting all the gossip and talking about, you know, everything that's been going on and all that jazz. Uh, so that was super, super fun. We hung out, talked for, God, forever. And the funny thing is, so where we had lunch is, is kind of in the building where Sirius XM is. It's like down in the basement. And a lot of employees from Sirius XM go down there for lunch. And it was literally at like noon. So, uh, there were a lot of people coming down. And so I just kept running into old coworkers the whole time I was there, which in some ways was great. Because there are some of them I really, really love and I couldn't wait to see. Uh, in fact, I ran into one that I was super, super excited to see because she had her baby with me, or baby with her, and I, and I hadn't met the baby yet, so I was very excited about that. Uh, and, oh, someone wants to know what uh, show and channel Katie went to. She's on the Wake Up With Taylor uh, show in the morning, and I think it's on Sirius Stars. I feel like that's where it's at, but uh, don't quote me on that. Anywho, so I ran into a bunch of people. There were some people that walked in that I didn't want to see, but whatever, I just ignored them. Uh, and yeah, so it was super fun. I loved hanging out with Katie. Uh, you know, she just makes me smile. She put a big smile on my face. And I told her that we want her to join Derek and Romaine for one of our Google Hangouts. So we are going to try to get her on to one of the Google Hangouts on a Sunday for Sunday Fun Day. Um, I'm not sure when, but we did ask her. And yeah. Uh, someone wants to know, did they cancel my Sirius account like they did Derek? Yes. <laughs> they did. Uh, Trey wants to know what time she has to get up. Well, she told me she had to be at the office by like uh, 5.30 tomorrow. So pretty fucking early. Oh, God. It sounds horrible. I mean, really horrible. Oh, my God. Miserable. Um, so, yeah. So, anyway, great seeing her. Loved it. Had fun. Uh, that was great. Uh, okay, let me see. I have other things on my list I want to talk to you guys about. Isn't Ursula awesome? just puts me in the best mood. Uh, someone asked if, Ira, or if uh, Romy likes Ursula. Romy, do you like the new Ursula? She says no, but I think it's just because she's scared that she's going to steal her soul or something. And she doesn't have to worry about Ursula. She has to worry about me. Oh, she doesn't like Ursula. Probably because she thinks she's the Little Mermaid. Okay, so uh, other things I want to talk about. So today's my anniversary with Iris. You may or may not believe it, but we have been married for six years. Holy shit. How did that happen? <sighs> I mean, we've been together a lot longer than that. Um, but six years, I mean, whoo, doggy, that's a long time. I almost, uh, I almost am shocked that we've lasted this long. I know many of the listeners are because I always bad, bad mouth Iris. Um, and sometimes I'm, I really am surprised because God knows... Uh, Iris and I have certainly had our differences <laughs> over the years, but I do love Iris, and I always, you know, I always used to say on the um, on the show that um, I would always say the mean stuff, and I would always forget to say the nice stuff. And there really is a lot of nice stuff to say about Iris. Um, one of the great things about this unemployment situation is that I've actually gotten to spend a lot of time with Iris, uh, which has really helped. Uh, not only has it made our relationship stronger, um, but, you know, I feel like when you're working two completely different shifts, like we were, uh, she'd work the day shift, I'd work the night shift, we really never saw each other. That really took a big toll on our relationship. And when I was talking to Katie about it today, Katie's like, that was your entire relationship, your entire relationship. You've been working these crazy opposite schedules. So it will be interesting, I think, to see uh, what happens with my next move. Like, if we end up getting another show, it certainly would be nice to pick hours, if we can, um, that will 
allow for me to have more time with my family and with Iris in particular because I think it does strengthen our relationship and make us better. Um, and I've really enjoyed, I've actually really enjoyed this last month of just getting to hang out with her and um, getting to hear about her day and all that stuff. So it is, it is, it's kind of a, kind of a blessing, I'm going to say. So anyway, so today is our anniversary. Now, some of you may want to know what we got each other for our anniversary. Well, given the unemployment situation, we decided to say uh, we're not going to get each other gifts for our anniversary. We're going to wait and celebrate our anniversary on the DNR cruise in November. Because by then we'll have a better sense of where things are at with um, jobs and stuff like that. So we kind of said, all right, so nothing big. We're going to celebrate in November. Uh, when I got home today from my crazy long day in the city, uh, there was a bag of Hershey Kisses on the kitchen table and a lovely card. I also got her a lovely card. Uh, and I have, some, I have some other stuff up my sleeve, we'll just say. Now, many of you have been asking about her Apple Watch that she got. I mean, I don't know about you, but I love it! She gave it to me! That's right! Whoop, whoop! I got an Apple Watch! Apple Watch! What? Hi, Romy! Mm, mm, mm. Apple Watch! Right here on my hand! Well, Ooh. show me it. Right there! It's right there! Right Can there! Is the one you wanted? It's close enough! <laughs> Are you I don't. I think sure? it's the 38 inch one because it looks a little small. I wanted the I wanted the slightly bigger one, um, but whatever. I don't care. It was free because. Sure? Oh my god, you're so loud in my ear. <laughs> all right, go play your Minecraft. No. Then I'm gonna turn it off, and you're not gonna get to play it at all. I don't want to play right now. Okay. Well then. Shh. You. Sh <laughs> Seriously, be good. Uh, we've got stuff for you to do in a minute anyway. All right, so, uh, yes, she gave me my Apple Watch, well, her Apple Watch that she won through a thing at work. I'm very excited. Did I wear it to the unemployment office? I did not. <laughs> I actually was charging it um, most of the day, so I left it here at the house so that it would be all charged up when I got home so I could play with it. Why is there a cat on my head? She likes you. I don't like it. Okay. So I got an Apple Watch. I can't wait to fool around with it and figure out all the, how it works and stuff and all that stuff. Um, and that'll be great. Did you drive six to the unemployment office? No, I took a public transportation into the city. I don't like to drive six into the city if I can help it uh, because I don't want her to get banged up. Anyway. Love my anniversary gift. Now I'm going to have to do something super special for Iris. Although I did pay for that stupid fucking CrossFit class that was very expensive. And I did tell her when I paid for it that was her anniversary gift. So maybe I don't have to do anything at all. We'll see. I have some friends coming into town this weekend. So I thought maybe I'd convince them to do some babysitting. I'll take Iris to a nice dinner. We'll see. Uh, can you periscope from the watch? No, because I don't believe it has a camera in it. But it is really neat because, um, like, when you get a text message, or it vibrates on your wrist. And so you can just look down on your wrist versus having to pull out your phone. I do kind of like that feature a lot, actually. I'm also going to be really interested in to see how the, um, the health app works in terms of, like, seeing your movements and when you're standing, when you're sitting, all that jazz. Romy is performing behind us. Um... So, yeah, so I'll be curious to see how all that goes. Um, I'll keep you guys posted. But Apple Watch! Woo -woo. I got an Apple Watch! Ooh, ooh. Yeah! Super awesome, and I love it. Okay, what else did I want to talk to you? Okay, here's the other thing I want to talk to you. I have it on my piece of paper. It says Dildo Stories. Have you guys been paying attention to the news lately? Anyone else? I think Derek posted a couple of these stories um, on the Derek and Romaine Facebook page, mm -hmm. but there are some crazy, 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 crazy motherfucking dildo stories happening in the world. The first one, Portland, Oregon, is being decorated by dildos. By that I mean some person is tying dildos together and then tossing them up on power lines. You know like when you see shoes hanging from power lines? But in this case, it's dangling dildos. I don't know who this person is, but it's fucking funny. Romy, what are you doing back there? She's trying to show you her track trophy. They love it. It's super cute. Um, you can't be in here while I'm talking about dildos. It's inappropriate. Okay, so dildos hanging from power lines. Uh, it makes me want to put some dildos together and throw them out on the power lines in front of my house. 
get her out of there. I told her to leave. Uh, you know how expensive they are. Uh, dildos are expensive. I do know. I mean, the ones I have anyway. Uh, they're very expensive, but I never buy them because people send them to me. But anywho, I do love the idea of dildos dangling. And I think some of you bitches, when you have, like, breakups and you don't know what to do with your dildos, this is what I think you guys should start doing with them. Dildos on power lines. I support this. I mean, it's inappropriate, but it's fucking funny. And evidently there are hundreds of them, according to our listener here. So, I support it. Dildos on power lines. Just saying. think it's funny, and I wish I could see them in person because it makes me laugh. Okay, uh, next. How do they stay up there? They're on a string, so when you toss them up, the string gets wrapped around the power line. That's how they stay up there. And the only way to get them down is to go up, is the power line company goes and cuts them down. So they're going to be up there for a while. Oh, man, it's awesome. Someone asked what's on my t-shirt. It's a Johnny Cupcake shirt. It's a airplane dropping cupcake bombs. If you get dildos postmarked from Portland, beware. I will. Okay, the other story that Derek posted up on the Derek and Romaine uh, Facebook page is a story about a woman who got arrested for domestic violence because she was hitting her partner with a dildo. <laughs> what? I mean... <laughs> That's so inappropriate! You, who does that? Who walks up to their girlfriend and smacks them across the face with a dildo? I mean, lesbians! That's some crazy fucking fighting going on right there. I, I mean, I don't even know what to make. And evidently, it was because they were fighting because uh, one of them was leaving the other one and they were arguing over what belonged to who. And so the one girlfriend walked up to her, waved the dildo in her face, and goes, Does this belong to you or to me? And then started smacking her with the dildo. I fucking love lesbians. I love lesbians so fucking much. I love their crazy ass lesbian drama. You, I mean, lesbians are crazy. That's some funny shit right there. I love the idea of lesbians beating each other up with dildos. Oh, I mean, I don't like the idea of lesbians beating each other up because, you know, that's not good. But damn, that's some crazy shit right there. And then the police, there was a police officer that was there to kind of oversee this whole um, separation of property thing. So the so he had to like pull the, oh, it, whoa, sorry guys, my stand fell down. <laughs> okay, so this guy had to literally pull this crazy lesbian off this other lesbian who's wielding a dildo. Craziness. Absolute craziness. Alright, let's see if I can fix this real quick. It was a duct tape fail. It didn't hold my stand properly. Periscope down. Yes, it, it really was. Okay. So here's the question I have. Police officer intervenes, right? Stops the lesbians from beating on each other with the dildo. Does he take the dildo as evidence? Because the lady was arrested. She didn't have to, like, post bail. Where is the dildo now? And who did the dildo belong to? These are the these are the questions inquiring minds would like to know. Wouldn't you like to know? I know I would. <laughs> Makes me want to take my dildo and smack Derek or smack Iris across the face with it and see what happens. Oh, she'd be so mad. I mean, right? And how big of a dildo was it? Were we talking like a six-inch dildo? We're we talking about like a big 14-inch thruster? Like, don't you want to know more? You can't get over Ursula's nipples. She doesn't really have nipple nipples. She has more, like, seams on her boobs that kind of come to a little bit of a point. Pretend to be a journalist and call the precinct? That's actually not a bad idea. I would like to know some, uh, some answers to some of these questions that I have. Right? You guys want to know these questions, right? You want to know these answers. It makes me wish I could, I had a radio show on the air right now so I could call this lady and interview her myself. Because that would be a fucking funny interview. Oh, man. And I also wish I could interview the person who's throwing dildos up on the power lines in Portland. Alas. Uh, Tim says he would like it if a guy hit him with a dildo. Well, okay. Whatever you're into, buddy. <laughs> Oh, 
man. I don't want to be hit with a dildo. Fucked with one, maybe, but I do not want to be hit with one. No, thank you. I have better uses for my dildos. I'd like to think I do. All right, so those are my topics for today. I think I've covered them all. I spent some time talking to Derek today. We, uh, we spent some time discussing the future of the Derek and Romaine cruise. My fucking stupid ass stand does not want to hold still today. It wants to fall over, so if it does again, I apologize. I don't know why it's being a bitch. I don't know. Maybe it needs some more duct tape. Anywho, I did talk to Derek about the future of the Derek and Romaine cruise today. Uh, we hope to have an announcement within the next week or two uh, as to whether or not we're going to be still doing Alaska. Um, I think the goal is to do it, but we still have to make a couple decisions on um, if we can find the right one, the right itinerary, and all that jazz. So we are looking. Did I ask him how his chicken tenders and tots were? No. Did he have chicken tenders and tots? Believe it or not, I am not watching every uh, waking move of Derek Hartley. I know it's shocking, I know it's hard to believe uh, that I'm not watching every one of his Periscope videos, especially considering how few that he is doing, but, you know, I just don't have time. Hold on, I'm going to add a little extra bit of tape. Make sure this is firm. <laughs> firm. Like a dildo. <laughs> That's what he had for dinner. That doesn't seem like a very healthy dinner. Um, that, doesn't, that doesn't seem like a very healthy dinner. Oh my god, my wife is crazy. She's getting fish food for Goldie the fish, which probably is by, de by now dead. Hey, Romy, have you checked on Goldie? Do you remember the fish that Romy won at the carnival? Which, by the way, whose water I have not cycled. I guess I should do that tonight. Someone said that he eats like a seven-year-old. No, Derek does eat a little bit like a seven-year-old. I, on the other hand, have been eating very healthy um, because I've been cooking, uh, cooking my meals at home. Uh... Someone wants to know if we can still ask dildo whisper questions. Of course you can ask dildo whisper questions. The best way to ask me dildo whisper questions actually though would be to email me so that I can have them prepared ahead of time. Uh, and my email address is romainepatterson at gmail.com. Uh, super easy. You can just, or you can Facebook me a message. And that way I can answer them and I can, I can prep some stuff. Because the nice thing about Periscope is that now I can actually show you guys pictures of some of the products that I'm talking about. I know on the radio it was always hard to kind of know what they were, but now I can actually show them. Um, someone wants to know, Best Lube, uh, are you a man or a woman? That would help. Um, and what is it for? Is it for vaginal sex or for anal sex? See, these are the questions I have. I gotta know answers. I don't have the I gotta, I know the, I gotta know what you're looking for. There's so many different types of lube now, and there's so many different ways of lube, so, of like using lube, so you kind of have to, you know, woman and vaginal. Um, I like a good water-based lube. Swiss Navy has a really nice water-based lube for women, uh, for vaginal. If you have sensitivities to lube, there's another brand called Pink that I really love, um, that uh, I think you would like as well. So, either one of those um, are great lubes for women for vaginal sex. See? Simple as that. All you have to do is give me a little information. I can answer those questions. I enjoy it. I need to write a book. Oh, if I only had the time. <laughs> Maybe I'll get around to it now that I have a little bit of time. I really want to write a book with Derek. Um, and we, we, have, we just have to start working on it. Oh, we just have to start working on it. Oh, gosh. But I'm not sure which book I want to write first. That's the problem with me, and I've been I've been having this problem for years. Hope Tantas keeps supporting you guys if you find a new outlet. I'm sure they will. We I'm very good friends with Metis, who owns Tantas, um, and they've always been big supporters of us, and vice versa. So I'm pretty certain that um, that Metis will continue to support us in whatever we end up doing. Show the ring off close up. My wedding ring. Okay. Yeah, let me take it off. It's easier. It's actually, um, let me see if I can get it to focus a little bit better. That's my ring. It's very simple. Um, and believe it or not, it's not the engagement ring that Iris gave me. I don't wear her engagement ring because um, it was a little too feminine for me. Um, this is actually my mother's engagement ring. Um, it was one of the things she left me when she passed away, and it's something that means an awful lot to me. So I, uh, I wear Betty's engagement ring and her wedding band, and then behind it I wear um, 
I wear this wedding band. That's the one that Iris gave me. So I wear, it's kind of like three rings all in one that I wear every day. But I like it because it's like having having Betty close by. It, it just, you know, it's something that she really didn't take off for over 40 years. So I don't know. I just like it. It makes me feel good having her around. And I kept my other, my other engagement ring and eventually one day I'll give it to Romy. But, you know, down the road. Uh, hi, Isabella. How are you doing today? I hope you're doing well. By the way, I'm starting to get closer and closer to my million hearts. I'm very excited about that. Uh, Paul and Mass says, I actually enjoy you more now than on the radio. Really? I don't know why. Is it because you get to see my smile? <laughs> or is it because you don't have to hear Derek's long-winded stories in between my little, yeah, uh-huh. <laughs> I'm going to guess it's that. <laughs> Uh, Romaine, have you seen all the trailers leaked from Comic-Con? Not yet. I have not, um, I just haven't done it yet, but I will. Uh, I will, uh, certainly try to get caught up on all the Comic-Con stuff, because I always love hearing about what's coming out of Comic-Con. It's always so exciting. Um, so yeah, I'll, I'll definitely be checking those out very, very soon. Suicide Squad for the win. I can't wait. Cannot wait. I'm excited about the Suicide Squad. Oh, yes I am. Uh, I think, uh, I think it'll be great. We'll see. You know, I love, this is one of the great things about my wife. I get to go to movies for free. Oh, I love that. Uh, Black Oblivion wants to know how the walking thing is going. It's going pretty good. I've been walking as, as often as I can. Um, but, uh, you know, some days it's a little bit harder than others. Uh, just because it's been a little rainy and shitty weather out here. And some days I've actually been really, really busy, believe it or not. So... Yeah, uh, it's been a little challenging on some days, but I've been walking much more than I ever did before, so that's a good thing. Uh, someone wants to know what I thought of the Minions movies. I actually haven't seen it yet. Romy saw it for the first time today, but we're also going to see it again this weekend, because that's the movie we're going to for her birthday party. So, I didn't want to spoil it by seeing it early, but she went today on a field trip, so that's why. Have you heard about the Dildo Factory in Lancaster, Pennsylvania? I actually have heard about it. I think it's awesome and it's supposed to bring a bunch of jobs to Lancaster. Uh, maybe I should move to Pennsylvania and go work in a dildo factory. Can you imagine that? <laughs> oh, that could be fun. That actually could be a lot of fun. Although probably not so much because I bet in the dildo factory itself it's actually pretty boring. Because um, they're just, you know, making dildos. Probably painting them and blah, blah, blah. I don't know that I would like it. I'd love a job designing dildos. I think that'd be kind of fun. You know, I think that would be great, but eh, we'll see. I don't know. I'd love to go work for a company like Tantus that, you know, has great uh, a great product and um, and uh, a great philosophy on sex toys, but they're, they're all the way out in Reno, so I don't see that happening. Unless maybe, you know, Dennis Hoff decides to hire me to be a madam at his, uh, one of his bunny ranches. Now that I would do. I think I'd be very good at it. I don't know how Iris would feel about it, but I do think that I'd be very good at it. Uh, someone wants to know, did Romy stay till the end of the credits? I doubt it because she was there on a field trip, but Iris says there's something at the end, so we will most likely be staying. Are you making Romy a minion cake? No, we're making her a, um, a Minecraft cake because that's what her and, her and Cody are really into. And I finally came up with a design for it. It's going to be a round cake on the bottom that's going to have like the green pixelated grass kind of stuff. And then I'm going to put little Minecraft characters kind of on the top of it. And then on top of it, the second tier is going to be a square tier. And it's going to be, um, they have cakes in Minecraft that you eat. And so I'm going to make a Minecraft cake on top of her cake. Which I think is really clever and funny. So that's going to be her. It's going to be a Minecraft cake on top of her Minecraft cake. So, yeah. Most people won't get it because they're going to look at it and they're going to be like, what, I don't understand. But anyone who knows about Minecraft will totally get it. And I think it's clever. I wanted to do the TNT on top, but Romy didn't like that. She's like, I don't want that. So then we decided on the cake on top of the cake. She says that she doesn't want the TNT because Cody likes to blow things up. So the TNT will be too encouraging of him to blow stuff up. I, I don't know. Oh my god, Iris is at the pet store and she cannot find fish food. I don't know why she's getting fish food for a fish that's going to die in the next 24 hours. I don't, I, uh, uh. Don on Cape Cod says he's looking forward to the cruise. It's his first cruise ever. Well, prepare yourself. 
because it's going to be good. And I'm getting very excited. I This is the tough thing about not having a show every day is that I can't tell you guys about all the stuff that I've been working on behind the scenes because I may not have a job, but it doesn't mean I'm not working on stuff. Just saying. And Derek, I think, sent out an email this week because, you know, it's getting close to final payment times for the cruise. Um, so he sent out an email reminding people to make their payments. But also, it included some information about our theme nights. We're going to do a, uh, an 80s rock night. And then we're going to do another light up the night uh, party. But this time, uh, instead of a, being a white party, it's going to be a neon party. So you got to go bright neon colors and light up, which is going to be fucking, fucking crazy. Oh my god, I can't wait. <laughs> it's going to be so much fun. I think maybe a Tron outfit is necessary. I mean, that's straight up out of the 80s, right? <laughs> Can you imagine my fat ass in a Tron outfit? I mean, think about it. Just think about that. I'll leave that right there for you. So yeah, so the cruise is coming up. And uh, so yeah. Do you watch any other Periscopers? You know, I've, I've kind of dilly-dallied a little bit with other periscopers some of them I find really fucking boring like they just sit there and they're like doing their hair and I'm like nobody fucking wants to see you. what who gives a shit about how you do your hair uh -huh. there's some of them I just find boring there's this big fat naked guy I saw the other day like periscoping from his bed and I'm like I don't want to see you naked that's just gross so I have I have seen some but I have not seen all so um I will continue to scope around and see what I find. Okay, now we're pretty close to the time where I got to cut off. So I'm just going to say this. I'll do another Periscope tomorrow and uh, we will go. Uh, Steven says, look at the Tron coaster in Shanghai Disneyland. I already did. I wish they had one in the United States because I'd ride that shit every fucking day. It looks amazing. Oh my God, it looks amazing. Okay. So, uh, what was the name of the woman who used to have the show after yours? Diana Cage is the name you're looking for. Diana Cage. She's doing very well. Okay, that's it. I gotta stop answering your questions. I gotta get going. But, uh, I will say this. I'll do another scope tomorrow, probably around the same time. In the meantime, I'm gonna go spend some time with my girlfriend Ursula, who's fucking awesome, and I love her more than life itself, and I'm gonna play on my new Apple Watch that my wife gave me for my anniversary. See, today is way better than yesterday. Like, so much better. Whew, much better. All right, so to all of you, oh, wait, oh, I forgot my business. Wait, whoa, 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 where'd it go? Hold on. See, my wife and child moved my stuff. I forgot to show you guys this. We are still collecting uh, postcards for Romy. So if you are one of the states that has not sent a postcard yet, which are most of them, send us a postcard, 328 Green Pond Road, P.O. Box 273, Hibernia, New Jersey, 07842. Mom. Yes. Oh, we're going to do the map after this. Romy and I are going to start crossing off all of the states that have sent us postcards. By tomorrow, we will have a map with some X's on it for you guys to see. Uh, all right. So we'll see you guys later. Kisses to my bitches. We love you. We tell them you love them. Bye. And she says bye. All right. We'll see you guys tomorrow. Bye, everybody.